That was a nice motion for me to open. Welcome to the first episode of Hunkered Down with Seth. Uh, since we're all currently in a quarantine, being March 14th, Pi Day, we I decided to reconnect with friends. I have a wonderful friend who I haven't spoken to in literal years, and I'm very excited to speak with her. Hopefully uh, we get to hear what she's been up to, it, but it's all on her. If she doesn't want to share anything, uh, totally cool. I'm not going to... I'm not going to really push for anything. But, uh, yeah, since we're hunkered down, it's called Hunkered Down with Seth. Let me uh, put my arm down so you don't see how hairy it is. And, yeah, this has gone flawlessly so far. Uh, so my guest today, very old friend of mine. I've known her. I know the exact timeline of me knowing her because I met the woman who is now my wonderful fiancé. And then I did a trip to San Francisco to do some shows, and I met her, and we had a Valentine's dinner together, but it was completely platonic. We are absolutely good friends. Molly Sockham, welcome to the first episode of Hunkers with Seth. How are you? Great, Seth. I'm great. Well, uh, yeah, good to talk to you, man. It's been a long time. Oh, totally. Uh, yeah. Let's begin with current events this is if you guys are wandering the western wasteland looking for what happened this is our initial uh, quarantining from the corona scare uh what have you done to prepare um i am actually back with my parents here so uh, it's not what i've done to prepare it's what they've done to prepare i'm taken care of okay oh good <laughs> all right so my parents got it locked down, all right? I mean, we got, like, five 50-pound bags of rice and, like, you know, six cases of water. That's just us being Asian, though, but that's – so nothing's nothing's really changed. Oh. <laughs> oh uh, right? Absolutely. And uh, you guys are making sure you're sanitary, washing your hands, making – you know, we got a good collection of medicine just in case. Yep, yep, that's all good. But I'm always thinking, like, if you're, if you are just in the house, you're in the house, like, with the same people, you know? There is, there is, uh, what, four of us right now? Um, I assume. I... And it's, yeah, there's, I don't know who we've left out. Uh, <laughs> they got to fend for themselves right now. <laughs> they can't get back in. Yeah, well, it's one of those things but, you just got to watch out for the people around you. So be, being right, selfish right, in a situation like this is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not laughing too much now after I uh, used, to, used to tease my dad about um, hoarding all the napkins he's stolen from Starbucks. So... I mean, and we have bags of that shit, like bags of it. How, how, and I'm looking at the bags like, Dad, genius. You're amazing. How you've much, saved us all. You've, you've saved us all. How deep is your packet <laughs> drawer? The, the what? The packet drawer. How deep is it? The, the packet drawer? No, we just keep them out in bags. They're just like on the tables, in the kitchen table. Nice. So you got your hot mustard, your soy sauces. Oh, yeah. No, condiments. Forget the condiments. We don't need condiments. We need napkins. We need Starbucks napkins. That's it. Yeah, well. Like, that's like, yeah, there's no condiments. <laughs> well, if things keep going Believe the way. Believe it or not. <laughs> if things keep going the way they are, condiments might be currency. So. Yeah, for real. Might be for real. Might be able to trade uh Six packets of Taco Bell fire for a chicken. Who knows? It, it's the the future is pretty bleak right now. Dude, it's going that way. I mean, if mom is stocking up on party pizza, like that's the healthy choice. I mean, that's it's, it's looking real grim when we have no options left. Like the people, like if you're gonna be eating freaking. Um, you know, three cups of noodles a, a day. I don't know if we're really going to survive anything. Really? I mean, yeah. <laughs> three cups of noodles. <laughs> three cups of noodles. Ooh, we'll see how. Uh, yes, yes. Well, three you're used noodles, to that. Two party pizzas. <laughs> huh? Uh, b 
being comics, we're pretty used to that. Three cups of noodles, ramen. Yeah, that's just life. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Really, other that's than the new, huh? going out, there's really no changes to our diets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real. So let's, yeah. uh, let's... I was gonna... Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, let's uh, go back. Uh, last time I spoke to you, let's see, you were visiting Seattle, which is currently ground zero, unfortunately. Hope all, everyone up there is safe. Um, uh, now that I'm in Long Beach, California, which is, to uh, those of you who don't know, the Cambodian capital of California. A lot of wonderful Cambodian people, a lot of wonderful Cambodian restaurants, but... It's great. Uh, it sort of got off topic. Ooh, that's my people. That's my people. Oh, definitely. Shout out to all the aunties out there, outside the window. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm waiting. We got some family friends out there. Oh, def hey, if you need me to check up on them, you know, I could throw on my, uh, you know, three sweatshirts and a plastic bag over my head. I could improvise a hazmat suit and make sure they're doing well. Jesus. Yeah, but no, we got to uh, take care head. of the take care of the community. So mm -hmm. let, let's begin. So going back, you moved to New Zealand. Yep. Yep. Amazing country. Amazing. Why am I back? Yeah. Why, why am I back, Seth? Why are you? I mean. Why? <laughs> you know, my last year there was, you know, kind of up and down, but overall, it was the most amazing experience I've ever had in my entire life. You know, yeah. real chilled out. It's an island. Everybody's chilled out. Relax. We're just chilling. Exactly. A lot. <laughs> you know, free health care. Huh? Why did I leave all that? To come back. Wrong time to come back. The yeah. best time to stay in the island. And you know where it's a lot more spread out. Yes, population is smaller, but you can spread out. Is it's it? not a lot of people. Not, yeah, like oh, I mentioned earlier, you God. went from the Shire to Mordor. For real! For real, man. Yeah, and... It's, 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 it's like, it's a real nightmare right now. <laughs> Definitely. You know, listen, I miss my family. I miss my family, I miss some friends, and it was really good, like, moving and after almost, what, six years living in New Zealand? And reconnecting with everybody here, which is, it was great, you know. Because, um, you know, that's what I want to do in my, in my late 30s is uh, live with my parents. Uh, yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Is that... And, uh, yeah, it came in a very interesting time. Although there has been, a, like, you know, like five cases in, five cases in New Zealand as well, so. And they're pretty much uh, told them, what is it, the Prime Minister had told everybody to, uh, uh, self-isolate too as well for 14 days or something well because of the metric yeah. system it's really 26 for what because of the metric system it's really 26 days <laughs> do do they use right, the right, right. that is a metric yes. country right yes yes so initially yes. initially why did you move to new zealand in the first place no, i just wanted to do something different before I got too old to do it. Oh, and all Lord of the Rings, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> the only reason. Books or movies? You know. <laughs> um, movies. Who reads? Seth, who reads? Not enough people, unfortunately. <sighs> That's so sad. Yeah, so you figure um, after yeah. watching the Hobbit trilogy, it was time for you to go? the trilogy the trilogy came out a little later i got in right you know like oh what is it the last no it was the start of the hobbit that's right i don't remember i feel like it's so long ago um yeah yeah i i got in yeah it was, it was really good i actually got to go to the shire Ooh. which was awesome it's 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 awesome it looks just like it's the movie it's the movie it's the shire it's great and I left, this is really cool, I left New Zealand when they were auditioning people to be in the Hobbit series. And they were really, they were looking for people that were like 4, 10 and under. And I was like, well, I fit the bill. Yeah. Why did I not stay? Yeah, what? well, initially, so, well, I'm going to get the timeline. So, you move there, how hard is it initially 
to go from America to New Zealand? Like, what sort of paperwork, well, what just, sort of, what was the process? I did the research. I did a lot of research uh, with visas and stuff, and there's different programs out there that kind of, you know, expedite the, the process. And uh, each of what, I paid like 500 bucks for somebody else to take care of stuff, and all you need to do is some little bit of paperwork, but, you know, I've, I participated in a program. Now, what I initially, why I went to New Zealand, really, um, I want to do something different, but I was, I went to New Zealand to visit, and I did a tour, like a three-week tour, and I fell in love with everything, and I did all those, like, adventure things, right? And... And uh, I made friends with everybody on this tour, and then one of the girls on the tour, um, we were Skyping one one night, and she was like, you know, there's this guy that I met at the bar that we all hung out all together. You know, you met him, you met, you met him. Well, he's my boyfriend now, and we live in Wellington, New Zealand. You should get a visa and come live with us. We have a, <laughs> we have a room. <laughs> And as soon as she said that, I was like, uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. That sounds cool. I w- it's the craziest thing. The craziest thing. I, w- I don't, I didn't never thought I'd ever do anything like that. Right. Yeah. But, uh, that was the, that was pretty much the thing that got everything started and the ball rolling. All right. Got a visa. And I was like, mm, I will live in New Zealand for a year. Yeah, that's cool. I'll be like picking fruit for a year or something, you know, like a, a seasonal job. Yeah. And then I just thought about it and I was like, um, I don't pick fruit. I I'm mean, a city girl. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? I mean, you got the height to pick fruit. It's not like... Yeah, it's perfect, right? Mm. You know, you're, uh, I'm assuming, three and a half feet tall, so... I, yeah. I don't know, I'm not good at, I, I think you're between three and a half feet and eight feet tall, I'm not good with numbers, but, uh, so you moved to New Zealand, what did you do for money? Um, I got a proper office job, and they supported me for uh, some more time there, so basically they sponsored me there for a couple more years, got a resident visa. Um, you know, but of course you're trapped at that job for like the two years, right? Yeah. They sponsor you, 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 you know, you're set up on your passport and you must stay at this job, blah, 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 for two years. And then, um, I stayed there for two years and then I applied for a, uh, a permanent resident visa, uh, myself. And yeah, uh, I did just, I, it was a, it's a long process. So I am a permanent resident of New Zealand. I can go back. And leave whenever I want. Well, unfortunately, that might be sooner than later. Um, mm, I don't know how. <laughs> don't know about that. No, you. Uh, depending, uh, I haven't heard of any travel restrictions there. I think it get there soon. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well. Well, you can leave all yeah, this behind. Went, yeah. Gosh, they were losing. People were losing their shit for a little bit, though, right? Like, New Zealand's actually cool, because I still talk to people, obviously. A lot of friends there sharing stories. And people were losing their shit when they heard that everybody... Like, people were posting um, concert pictures from Tool, from the Tool concert. <laughs> and and then news broke out that there was one audience member who had uh, who, who had the virus... And everybody was like, oh, shit, what day was it? Was it Friday? Was it Saturday? Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the joke is everybody was like, oh, thank God I got seats. And I'm like, oh, yeah, thank God I'm old. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, you've lived, if you're in New Zealand, you've lived a good life. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, you're like, hey, this is my time to go. Eh, it's yeah. fine. All right. That's big news, like something like that in New Zealand. Yeah. yeah like. So you met an American there, and you created Hangry Americans. Um, yeah, yes, yes, which is a, a duo group. Yeah, with right. my friend, my buddy, Neil Thornton. Neil Thornton? Um, 
Thornton or yeah, somebody. T H Thornton. 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 Okay. T yeah. Shout out Neil. We're missing you and uh, hope you're doing well wherever you are. Whoop. Yeah. Double up. Whoop whoop. And <laughs> so, what do you got? Hangry Americans. Uh, you just went on stage, talked about being very hungry and angry. That's the gist. That's pretty much the gist of the show. We talked about food. It was madness and silliness. And it was the best thing we've ever done together. Um, we also took that show to Edinburgh, which is great. Ooh, are they going to cancel Edinburgh? Yes. I don't want it. Do you think? Yes. If there's it's, the biggest, it's the biggest arts festival in like the world. Which? I mean, how they're going to. They're going to have to. It's in August, right? Uh, yeah, it, yeah it's in August. if there's a gathering of four or more people, it's canceled. We can, <laughs> we, you know, yeah. so many bachelorette yeah. parties are going to be at home. So, you know, speaking of, uh, if you need a uh, male stripper, I am not available. Guys, I got a private, uh, I got, I got a tenure here in my personal apartment, so... Bachelorette parties, if you're looking for something like that, sorry. Oh, so sad, Seth. Yeah, I know. It was my bread and butter. So That 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 was my uh, stripping team. I was bread. The other guy was butter. <laughs> so. Nice. I tried. <laughs> I want all of this to be this an hour of just this. I got nothing better to do than just this. You know. Uh, I got to be a... Uh, but I I really got to go out and do some shopping. My uh, shimmering sage and lavender ca uh, scented candle is about two-thirds of the way through. So got to forge out into the abyss and pick up another scented candle. Mm, yes. Get those essential oils going, too. Now that's something I heard. Uh, to make your own hand sanitizer, you need the isopropyl alcohol, which is like ninety nine percent. Then you need um, aloe vera, and then you know something to scent it, and that's how you make homemade uh, homemade uh, hand sanitizer. Yeah. So, so, so my dad told me. I mean, he's he's good. He's he's followed up. He knows. He knows what's up on the web and stuff now because, you know, he got a phone, an, an iPhone, for that matter. Um, yeah. uh. <laughs> what he started doing was taking, he just started uh, getting, um, splitting all the hand sanitizer up in different containers and putting more alcohol in them. Oh, wow. So, so I'm just rubbing my hands in alcohol. So, like, like next week it's just going to be full shower. Oh, it's, yeah. You haven't showered yet? <laughs> Why are we going to waste the water? You know, we're going to save that up, man. I mean... You know, listen, I'm in a tracksuit. I'm chilling. My nephew's going berserk. He has nothing to do. My parents are on their phones. My mom's playing slot machines, games on her phone. My dad is on YouTube looking at clips of airplanes. Like, this is... This is normal for us. This is normal life. Yeah. So nothing's but, really changed. No. But I will say... I honestly... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, your dad does get my vote if we ever need to elect somebody chieftain. Okay. So, <laughs> he, he you know... Would, he would rule, man. Yeah, well... Like, my dad has survived a lot of things. He can do this. Definitely. He, <laughs> when it comes to tri tribalism, when we got to take over the cave people's tribe, your dad will... I will follow your dad into battle. I will sharpen a stick and yes. we will we will take over. Yeah. Seth, what is, what is your um is there a go to like movie that you would be watching right now? Like what's a good outbreak movie? Not outbreak. Uh, <laughs> well I would have for me it's always Hunt for Red October. You know, Sean. I've never seen it. It's a, I've never seen it. It's quite a submarine movie. It's it's really fun. Uh, Alec Baldwin okay. before he got too Alec Baldwin-y. It's 
it's my go-to movie. I, I could watch A Hunt for Red October any in any situation. If I'm at a wedding, I'll pop that on. If I'm at a mm. my brother has another kid, I'll pop that on. If um Okay. Okay, it, Alec Baldwin. Is this is this like pre Beetlejuice? Around the same time. I don't want to say pre or post cuz it it is okay. I think it was released at the exact same hour as Beetlejuice. It was early 90s. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're yeah, stuck inside. You've been streaming that Sammy K.O. Bede show. Oh, the 100 Humans. 100 it's so, Humans. It's so good. Yeah, they do all these experiments, uh, experiments and it's pretty, it's pretty silly. It's pretty fun. Yeah. I'm loving, loving it. People are, are great. I want to be on the show. How did I not know about this? Could have totally auditioned. Yeah, well, it's a... <laughs> just to be the ones who do all the experiments. That's just, this is fun. It's chaos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sammy's good. Sammy's, he's, he's awesome. Have you met him before? Oh, he's a comic friend I've known for, for years. Yeah. He's always be down, he's always down to do one of the, the shows um, I put on and yeah and uh, what did he do didn't he do like a thousand days straight of comedy yep. yeah like he was on the Guinness Book of World Records of non-stop comedy and that could just include you know performing at you know two drunk dudes at a bar like it doesn't matter if it's a pro show or an open mic yeah I heard he yeah, uh, that, to fill in some of the nights he would go to uh, karaoke spots and just do a quick set instead of a song. <laughs> so there's a workaround that for that. That is awesome. Yeah. I think he was going mental for a little bit, actually. Yeah. Well, his nine, I want to say his 997th night in row, or night, like one of the late 990s was a Conan set. Oh, really? Yep. Oh. It's on YouTube, and you got plenty of time to look it up. Yeah. No, I've seen. I've. I didn't know that was the number. That. That's where he was. Yeah, was, it's in the yeah. past, and he's doing well. Yeah, Unlike. Doing well. Oh, you, know. you gotta read his blog, Seth. Gotta read his blog about how what recently he posted on his Facebook about how um, he got patted down at the uh, San Jose uh, airport, and this is the day that he he opened up on Twitter and they said that uh, three TSA agents uh, contracted the virus. Oh. <laughs> and basically the blog is amazing and it's about his whole like experience of getting a pat down. And basically he's like, ah, you know, the last thing you'd probably want to check is about terrorism right now because there's no, it's, it's basically it was like, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. Well. <laughs> Yeah, terrorism though. You, it there's not a lot of not a lot of good ways to be a terrorist nowadays. Not a lot of large events that could make a to get your uh, visibility out there. You know, unless it's yeah. at a yeah. Target or something. Do, do not. Uh, I'm not giving anyone any ideas. Please do not attack America right now. We got our own issues. As well as other countries around the world have their issues, so. I'm not gonna, I, I have not been to a store yet. Like, I have not been to a grocery store. Listen, I've, like, recently, I haven't been to a Target Walmart. I don't know how everything looks at the store. I don't know what the lines look like, except for what I've seen from friends posting on Facebook and stuff. And, and yeah, it looks kind of crazy. It looks kind of crazy. Oh, definitely. I stopped in Target yeah. earlier today to pick up some gummy bears, and oh my goodness, there are empty shelves, barely any soap, no toilet paper, no tissues, no Lysol. It's, it's what... But the food, that's what I care about. Is there food? Is that empty too? Pasta is empty. Um, Lime Flaming Hot Cheetos, this is all I need. Is that available? And Seth, what the hell are you doing going to a Target just for a bag of gummy bears? I have needs. Gotta, like, there's got to be a little quick stop somewhere, a little 7-Eleven. Th there is, but 
I'm also one of those people I want to be the uh, like the social philosopher who just I'm one of those guys who would go to a to a concert or a big event and uh, just look at the people, see what's going, you know, observing them. Oh, yeah. So, and you know, what really hit home with me was I was at the Target. And I saw a person in a nurse's scrubs loading up, and I'm like, okay, this is getting pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. It's like, you can't go, there's no good time to go, you know, really. No, it's like Black Friday every day there. You pay it? Yes! Yes! You know, and I, I don't know what kind of people you want to see at 2 in the morning at a Walmart. Uh, at, during this time. Well, can what, you imagine? Now you got me curious. I might go just for that. I think so, right? I mean, I think I think this would be an interesting time to go check out a Walmart at two in the morning. Yeah, two a.m. Walmart. People anyway. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I mean, just the usual people at two a.m. Walmart's is uh, people in eighty degree weather's with winter coats on and no shirt underneath. You know, still sagging their pants even though it's not 1995, and just seeing what they buy. It's it, it's it'll be now. It's just gonna be your average Joe. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Now, now a guy with tuxedo cufflinks. You know, fresh off from watching the opera on YouTube, trying to recreate the experience. It, yeah. So, since we're in lockdown, uh, what other binging options do you suggest? Uh, oh, I'm a fan of Outlander. Um, I've finished, yeah, no, I'm a fan of Outlander. I'm still w w working through it. Um, I enjoy the new Dracula, the Dr new Dracula series. Uh, right. I heard it's a this little blah. Yeah, a little blah. Well, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, Stupid vampire damn, joke. I promised the stream I will never do another vampire joke ever again. I apologize. Is that I? I missed that. It was so bad that I missed it. That mm. was great. <laughs> For the sake of the viewing audience, if there's anyone out there in this post-apocalyptic wasteland, if you stumble upon this. Um, yeah, just ignore my vampire joke, because I don't want to insult the vampires af you know, after we all, after all the worst has happened, you know, I'll lose my night audience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Outlander, describe Outlander for those who don't know, like me, who doesn't know about Outlander. Brits and Scots. Yeah, I don't care about the history. It's just uh, the love story between a British woman who's basically gone back in time. Uh, oh, she's from the night. She's from the nineteen nineteen forty. I see. I, this is going to be really bad because I hate, I don't know dates and history is it's so bad. And uh, yeah, I think it's from nineteen forty five, nineteen forty before we, whatever. And, uh, anyways, somehow she gets, um, I don't remember the first season. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Just, I don't know how she gets to some points. <laughs> really bringing the hard-hitting info gets... <laughs> to the viewers. Uh, all, all the viewers, Seth. All the viewers. All yes. the viewers. The... Everybody. Everybody. I could li probably go through the people by name who will watch this. So, Mom, Uncle Dennis, hey guys. But, um, yeah. yeah, my binging options, I'm thinking about binging what I usually do. Uh, almost all of that 70s show. When I say almost all, I'm including uh, up to when Randy joins the cast. And Really? Yeah, I... Randy, I mean, I don't want to bash Josh Myers because I hope the best for him. I don't want anything, but he was just not the... F it's one of those things where 
everybody's like, hey, there's Randy. He's pretty cool. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, we, ugh, it, it was really force feeding us. It was not, just not fun. Just, just, just give me my Fez and Kelso and I'm good. Okay. Okay. So I'll binge watch that again. See, now that's passion. Clearly, I don't have passion about Outlander. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I care. Listen, I only, the only thing I care about is the awesome sex scenes between the two um, lovers, you know, husband and wife in there. That's great. That's well, great. It's well, about their love story. That's well, all steamy, be, steamy. Well, just be careful uh, with what kind of hand sanitizer you have watching those. So, you know, I don't want... We gotta watch out for each other. I don't want any unnecessary pain, so. And I know that through experience, cause. <laughs> dude. Yeah, I know. I, that's the proper response, dude. <laughs> so what? How? How did you end up in Long Beach, man? Well, my lovely fiance, um, she gave me some some criteria for moving down to L.A. Because first I was living up in Granada Hills, which I liked, but it's it's all the way up in the valley. And there's a lot to like up there, like, uh, you know, a lot of foods. Shout out to Lulu. Lulu's, it's an amazing uh, place. They have the best steak sandwich I've had in the valley. But uh, Ksenia said she doesn't want to live farther away than 10 minutes from the beach. And Long Beach is the most affordable place that's 10 minutes from the beach. Mm. And and when, I just wanted to give a shout out to Long Beach. We There is so much to do here. We got the beach. We got a cool downtown. Well, cool if it's normal in normal circumstances. There's a cool arts area where it's cool. A, a gay scene is amazing. Everybody's friendly. We all get along. Great mix of culture. Tons of amazing food. And, uh, yeah, it's one of those, I chose it for the price, but we just discovered paradise. Long Beach is, but don't tell anybody, because we don't need more people moving here. You know. Dude, I'm, a, I'm, you sold me. Yeah, I know. I, why, why am I in the Bay Area? This shit sucks. Trying to find a place for yourself? No way. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. I was looking at Long Beach, man, and I was like, mm, you know, I would like to be close to my people. Yeah. Go to town. That's what I need. In Long I Beach, need the community. Yeah, Long Beach is great because it's just far enough from L.A. where it's a hassle for people up in L.A. to get down here. So, it you know, if you like your privacy, Long Beach is perfect. But easy transportation? Oh, yeah. The, stuff or what? Yeah, the blue line. I could just hop on and in 45 minutes be downtown L.A. Cool. Yeah, with Granada Hills, I had to take the bus to the express bus to the train to my lift. So, like, just on public transportation from Granada Hills to Long Beach was four hours. So, but, um, wow. L.A. is definitely a car town. If you don't have a car, you are really pressed to get anywhere. Yeah, I don't know how I... It's... it's torturing me that I don't have a car right now. Always had a car here in the Bay. Of course, I haven't had a car in New Zealand. I didn't need one ever. No, and everybody I, like, well, I don't miss having a car at all. They have the, the yeah. sleds pulled by rabbits. With what? Yeah, New Zealand, that's the main mode of transportation. Sleds pulled by rabbits. I have no idea what that means. You, you have a bunch of rabbits. You hook them up. It's like the Iditarod, but you have a sled. That that's what I got from the Hobbit, right? That one dirty wizard who was just going around. Oh God! Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. You can't do that to me, Seth. You going back? To, you can't. You're gonna lose me. You're gonna lose me. I've lost myself. I have no idea. <laughs> I I am hopped up on isopropyl alcohol right now. You know what it is? I've just I'm slumping i'm i'm just like full of party pizza frozen preserved crap lime flaming hot cheetos you know like i'm a slob i'm a slob right now 
I'm in a tracksuit. I'm in bed. This is it. This is my life. Yeah, well, so my brain's not working either. So. Well, the point Apologies. is, the point is that's what everybody is right now. We're all hunkered <laughs> down. We're all, we're all in this together. So let's make the best of it, because you know, without this, we're just talking with the people we loved, and we'll go insane if we just need to to spread our wings. That's right. You know, this is for That's the masses. Right. I'm telling you, my dad was, oh, my God. He was so obsessed. He was so obsessed with this whole corona thing when it all came out, right? Man. And chi when, when Chinese New Year was happening and, like, nobody was going, he's like, no, you don't want to go anywhere. Don't want to do this. Don't want to do that. Like, every day was that. Every day was talking about it. I don't know how I didn't go crazy just from that. Like I was getting, I was getting sick just from hearing him talk about it. Yeah, I mean, no offense and to, that, no offense oh, to my dad, no offense to my dad, but could your dad be my dad? I need that. <laughs> I mean, you know, my dad's great, but when it comes to survival, you know, all he does is watch Andy Griffith all day. So. <laughs> this is this is this is true. I love my parents very much. These yep. days. By the way, love you, Dad. <laughs> want to get that out there and make sure uh... do you know my dad one time he said he goes we are watching uh, we used to we used to watch Survivor all the time together and you know everything same island blah 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 all the time and he just looked at everybody he's like oh I said dad you can you can be on the show make some money you know you win this whole thing <laughs> and he's like oh Survivor you know I could survive that you know <laughs> Easy. Easy. I said, yeah, that's true. I know that. I know you can survive that, Dad. All right? You, you survived the killing fields. Yes. I know you can do Survivor. I know. <laughs> yeah. Your dad seems to be the guy who knows how to make shoes from scratch. Like he and could... if, he doesn't, if he doesn't know, he'll learn. Like, that's, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, like, he... we'll, we'll find, figure something out. Yeah, he'll hunt an elk, you know. And he could live off an elk for two months, you know, make clothes that'll <laughs> last him the rest of his life. He's, you know, your dad gets my vote for leader of, you know, post-coronavirus USA. Mm. Well, you know what, to be fair, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying my dad would survive everything, okay? We did go back to Cambodia and visit family, and I'm not going to lie, my parents were probably the... <laughs> the weirdest Cambodians ever in Cambodia because they brought their own granola bars. Cause they <laughs> 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 I mean, that's his, that's his whole surviving, right? Surviving Cambodia again, yeah. going back and like living off of granola bars while everybody was eating, you know, trilangelas and stuff. Yeah. And, I mean... um, yeah. So that was interesting. Yeah, I mean, some time there. They're very Americanized, you know. Yeah, I remember when I worked TSA. Uh, the the you did? Yeah, this was way back in two thousand seven. Oh. Yeah. That's a story all on its own. But the Asian flights, everybody hated working them in the packaging, in, like in the baggage area, because they would all get those bulk tooth toothpaste, the bulk uh, just. Half of Costco's in inventories would be in boxes, and because some yeah. some toothpaste have the same consistency as some plastic explosives, we had to open the box, test them, and they were always in the bottom. We had to, you know, pull everything out, test this one thing, then re repackage it, and tape it up. It uh, if there's anything, if there's any place I would go to survive an apocalypse, it would be Southeast Asia. They are stocked. <laughs> We used to bring everything to Cambodia. We used to brought we brought everything to our families. Definitely, definitely, toothpaste was one of those things. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and I am, I am so happy that I, like, no, you know, in Long Beach. If I ever need to survive, I just go three blocks uh, north. There's Cambodia Town right there. I just knock on a random Cambodian person's door and say hi. 
three weeks. I just need to be here for three weeks. Here's twenty dollars. Let let me hang out, and I get to eat the best Cambodian food. I get to hang out with the greatest aunties. I, yeah, you. I think I convinced you to move to Long Beach right now. Yeah, I don't know if that's the best way to go all the time. I don't know if everybody's going to be that happy to see you, you know? Like, I'd be like, are you sure, Seth? Are they actually open the door? Because I'm, I don't know about all that. I'm jolly. <laughs> I, I I make a good first impression. <laughs> you look like a trust, trustworthy kind of guy. That face. Whoa, what's what's untrustworthy? The glasses. The gla- yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. No. You do, you do, but I'm just saying we don't trust people easily. Okay. <laughs> you know, with, with <laughs> it doesn't the gl- matter. It doesn't matter. From my knowledge of uh, the Khmer Rouge, maybe glasses were a tell of someone's trustworthiness, and that's historical. It's not. It's definitely not a stereotype. I just want because I've done my reading about uh, the whole terrible stuff that happened there. But uh, no, I would I would trust somebody from Southeast Asia over anybody on TV right now. Oh yes. Mm. Well, that's not 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 the case right now. I'll take your word for it. You have a bit more experience yeah. with. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I know a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, I a little bit more. Yeah. All right. So when this thing all is done with hopefully um soon and it's really it sucks because i really wanted my flights right yeah flights to london uh, to go to a friend's wedding in august yeah i don't know if i should just buy the flights I mean, should i just buy the flights because technically you can cancel and get a full refund right? yeah if you get the trip insurance okay, yeah yeah Plus, flights are really cheap right now, so if you're looking towards August, I would say yes, because they're fully refundable. Yeah. I think that's a good way to go. Like, that's, yeah. So where, would you vacation anywhere after this, or what? What's going to happen, like, next year for something? Next year? What would be your go-to place? I would say the Glowing Hills, because that's where, um... I hear they have good farmland there, so, you know, if I say I'll work the fields in exchange for shelter and protection from the other tribes, that would be uh, my go-to. But if things return to normal, uh, vacation-wise, I got people up in Canada that I've been trying to see for a while. Oh, the Royals. The Broyles? The Royals. The Royal. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, tech, I guess they're not part of the kind of bad, kind of bad of it. They're still... Yeah. He's still Prince. He's still Prince Harry. And, yeah, you know? he, and he's just uh, the artist formerly known as Prince Harry right now. No. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm in the situation in age right now where any vacation has to be for family. I got the nieces and nephews up in Milwaukee. I got... The Ksenia's family up in Seattle. That would probably be our uh, first thing because Seattle is pretty ravaged right now. Mm, yeah. You know, I I said earlier that you know everybody's going nuts, thinking why Seattle's going crazy, but then you realize they have a gum wall where people stick their chewed gum on, and <laughs> it's pr- pretty popular. Yeah, no wonder you're going crazy. <laughs> in, yeah. in the best entertainment venue, the uh, unexpected productions up in Market Theater, they're literally next to the gum wall. So I'm lucky I wasn't exposed to that recently. Gross. So gross. I don't think I've actually went to go see the gum wall. It, Have I seen the gum wall? It's as advertised. Oh. It's as... It's as disgusting as you think. It's interesting, but it is... And people stick business cards on it, too. You know, you'll... Oh, come on. Well, that says a lot about the person there. What kind of business are they selling? Um, I've seen, like, tow truck drivers. I've seen, like, computer people who do tech stuff. 
The only one that made sense was somebody stuck an orthodontist business card there. And I'm like, yeah, nice. that perfectly yeah. makes sense. Yeah. What do, we, oh, do you remember our time there? Uh, not in Seattle. Like, I don't remember where you took me. We went to, well, I remember Ferris wheel. There was a Ferris oh, wheel. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. There was there. It, it, when you uh, went visited, it just newly opened. Um, yes. Not to get too personal, but uh, you did uh, meet up with our friend Jamal as well. He's doing well. <laughs> yes, I, I don't yes. want to get too deep, but uh, you did spend some time hanging out with him. And but but with you, me, and Ksenia, we just uh, walked around and hit up bars. You know the cool Seattle. Not the. I'm sure we went to the Space Needle. Um. I'm, no, I don't think so. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, didn't we do a duck thing, like a duck water oh, thing? Yeah, ride the ducks. The whole uh, a yeah. little duck tour. Yeah, I think I knew a guy, so I got to hook up on the tickets. Yeah, I haven't been back. I do like Seattle. Did like it a lot. Yeah, great to visit, but to live there, their real estate is now up with uh, San Francisco. Oh, really? Yeah, but we are literally making more money up here than we did the last months of Seattle because it is really pricey. Mm. Man, I'm just ugh, I'm just lucky to have a job that's still running, that's still you know needing people uh, to be at work. Oh, you yeah, still right now? They're not gonna work you from home. No, no. Um, office is quite. So, like, there's not a lot of people in the office, um, and then of course I work. I work for the city, so it's working in the like parks division. You know, just the parks people. So they're out on the field all the time, dealing with pruning and tree stuff and parks and dealing with all that. And I take in customer requests and things like that. And that's what I do. I get up uh, really early to get there. You're the Leslie Nope of Berkeley. Thing. What was that? You're the Leslie Nope of Berkeley. <laughs> Yeah. How many homeless people do they have to push down a slide? No, it's it's really bad. The encampments are bad. Yeah. Well, it's you, really bad. Oh, there's encampments down here too, so. Yeah. And that's and that's man, 2020, man, coming back. This is this is the scene that I see because I've been away for so long. So now coming back. Things are the same, but things are not. <laughs> now, what exact day did you move back from New Zealand? Uh, 23rd December. 23rd of December. So after, mm -hmm. so you're here two weeks later, Trump kills the third most powerful man in Iran, and it's mm -hmm. all, it's weird that it's gotten worse. That wasn't the worst thing to ever happen. No, no. It is, we were, we were, Everything's fucked, man. Everything yeah. slowly. It's not even slow. It's just back to back. Shit is happening. Yeah, this weird. There's so much to it's be. It's a weird feeling. It's like you want to be pissed at one thing, but within three days, everybody's moved on to a different thing to be pissed about. Yeah, totally. So. Yeah, I want to go back to a world where their big news was, you know, the special chocolate milk ran out. Like that's. That's New Zealand news, you know? Like, I want to go back to that world. Yeah. Where, yeah. And uh, mm. sneak me and Ksenia in your baggage, too. I will. I'll take you both. Uh, perfect. Sure. I think that's a good time to end, you know, to wrap this up on. It's been 49 minutes and 14 seconds. So, Molly, thank you. Let's, let's stay in contact. It's been too long. Of course, man. I love you. For sure, and, uh, and we love you, and feel free to come down, visit any uh, Cambodian people down here. We uh, got a fold-up bed for you. Yay, I love that. Cool. Thank you, Seth. Uh, thank you. One second.